Welcome back. You're watching us here on Trading Hour. The FMCG pack has taken a bit of a backseat in today's trading session, but just the last couple of days, we've seen a big move come by in a lot of the frontline spaces. And also, uh, you know, the paint stocks did well yesterday as oil prices saw a bit of a downtick as well. In fact, there has been a fair amount of volatility, but what does that mean for all the stocks on the whole? We do have Abneesh Roy joining in. Abneesh, you know, the last couple of days, we did see all the FMCG stocks back in action. Do you think that was just a trading pop or there was something fundamental because the next couple of quarters, what's your visibility on demand and margins? Sure, thanks. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, there is some profit booking today, but uh, there are three key things to watch out. Uh, one, of course, is what's happening on the rural demand. The NREGS data which has come out, that's at a uh, almost 11-month low, 12-month low, which I think is a good thing. We need to see the sustainability because that's the job of the last resort. So if NREGS demand is going down, that means that guy is getting a better paying job. So that's uh, something which looks good. Also, base becomes favorable for the rural demand in H2. So we will see that most companies may be aided by the harsh winter if that happens. Uh, the rural volume growth for most companies should see slightly better number. I think structural recovery could still take maybe one or two quarters for the rural demand. Uh, second bit is definitely on the margin side, we have seen a lot of uh, cool off happening in, say, palm oil, uh, crude also, packaging cost also. Yes, today crude is up, but if you see from the peak of, say, $130 plus, currently it's around $87. Uh, we need to watch out on the INR USD depreciation also because that does impact adversely the demand side. But on an overall basis, most companies should see gross margin expansion, EBITDA margin expansion. Uh, based on all this, our topics currently will be Hindustan, Unilever, uh, Britannia, Dauber, Nestle. Uh, we also like Asian paints, but for Asian paints, Q3 demand will be a bit weak. Nothing structural. That's because of the short window for the rainfall and the festive season. Uh, and the very high base which Asian paint sees in Q3. Abneesh, uh, <clears throat> morning. You know, um, earlier today we had a chat with uh, Bajaj Auto and they said the bottom has fallen off at the entry level. I know it's not a like-to-like -like comparison, but just to give an indication or the signaling that you get from uh, the rural market demand or the entry level demand, it does still paint a pretty dire picture. Um, what gives you confidence that things are incrementally on the mend? Any channel checks that you've done across categories? Yeah, it's a good question and we uh, did a lot of channel checks also. So uh, in H2, the rural recovery structural is not happening. Uh, definitely one more aspect is because uh, biscuits, noodles and soap plates will see uh, better gross margins. Part of that is being flowed back in terms of higher grammage in the lower unit packs. If you see for most category, around 30% is uh, lower unit pack, where last two years there was grammage cut. Suddenly you will see that grammage addition is happening, so that will also aid the volume growth. Uh, definitely uh, the good monsoon and the pickup in the uh, in the other jobs, and that's reflecting in the NREGS. That's also on the positive side. But yes, Q3, Q4, as of now, we are not seeing a big trend reversal structurally. It's more of a base effect and slightly harsher winter and slightly earlier winter, and definitely the other uh, reasons which I mentioned in terms of volumes. So yes, still challenging times, but now we are seeing uh, that the base effect will also play out for the rural demand. All right, Abneesh, you know, in your note, you have mentioned that for paint, Q3 volumes will be lower. How much of a dip are you factoring in in Q3? And then you're also saying that this will, of course, recover in Q4. So what is, um, you know, the kind of volumes that we should expect in Q3, Q4? I think still early days, if you see uh, most of the uh, fund managers will see the demand on a three-year, four-year basis also. Last many quarters, Asian paint has been reporting good double-digit CAGR in the volumes. Uh, here, uh, what we are picking up, one month is still left, so very difficult to call out that. But yes, even in Q3, November demand has been a bit better than the October demand for paints. Uh, this is more of a base effect and the window being short. It is not at all a structural demand issue in terms of paint. In fact, on the other side, because crude has fallen, say, from $130 to $87, titanium dioxide has also corrected. Paint companies now will have more firepower to give incentive and discount also. That should also help. Down trading also has been happening past few quarters in paints. 
that could also potentially reverse by Q4 and that will help the margin. So I will say that, yes, uh, Asian Paint also has got other businesses. So waterproofing, construction, chemicals, home decor. I think still they should report good double-digit volume CAGR on a three-year, four-year basis. On YOI basis, I think the base effect, etc., will be a challenge. But we need to wait for the December month. Abneesh, what proportion of gross margin expansion do you think will be ploughed back in terms of advertising and as a result of which, how much will actually flow through to the EBITDA margin and bottom line? I mean, everyone's factoring in EBITDA margin expansion, but chances are that companies who have not invested in advertising, brand building, innovation, etc. for the last three years because of COVID, etc. will now go back and use these savings to perhaps grow their market and market share a little more, right? Uh, so does that mean that gross margin expansion doesn't actually flow through to the bottom line? No, it will definitely happen. Uh, paint companies, FMCG companies operate in a band of margins. Uh, we have seen that in Tata Consumer in the most challenging GDP slowdown and COVID, did see good uh, improvement of 300 to 400 with gross margin last three, four quarters because T saw good deflation for, the, uh, for that period. I think that will also happen in soaps, biscuits, noodles, and even in the broader packaging cost related, the improvement will happen. Your point is valid that yes, ad spends will go up, but uh, FMCG companies are also seeing lesser competitive intensity from D2C brands. Because of the dry up of the liquidity and the kind of valuation bloodbath which has happened, uh, it, for the private uh, companies, it will be extremely tough times in the D2C space. So we will see that competitive intensity, which was impacting the listed FMCG, that will come down, which is a positive. So I would say that, yes, maybe uh, 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 say, if you see paint from the peak, there is a 800 to 1000 bits gross margin compression. My sense is if this continues and we see some more correction, a lot of these can come back. So 500 to 600 bits gross margin expansion can happen. For example, Asian Paint currently is operating at a 35% gross margin. They could go back to that 40, 42%, say by Q1, if the current scenario sustains. Uh, similarly, on the EBITDA margins from the current 14.5 is they reported in Q2, that should also come back to that 18 to 20% in spite of the higher ad spend. Same thing will happen for the FMCG also. Now the stock we often talk about, but your thoughts on United Spirits? Um, what are the fundamentals looking like for United Spirits now? Yeah, it's a good company. The uh, steps taken by the new MD, Hina, has absolutely been well taken by the market also. It's it's a step in the right direction. Uh, the issues are definitely Perno. Uh, India is a must-win market. Uh, there has been some price uh, war between uh, UNSP and Perno in some of the brands of the market. Second issue is in H2. Because gas prices have gone up further, glass prices will go up. Glass uses a lot of gas. So essentially in H2, there will be some price hikes which UNSP will get in, say, Bengal, Telangana, Andhra, etc. But partly that will be negated by the higher pressure in terms of the glass uh, inflation. So as of now, we are expecting more improvement in gross margin in the HUL, Britannia, Nestle's of the world and Asian paints rather than UNSP. So UNSP will be lower in terms of the pecking order. All right. All right, Avnish, you got that. Thank you very much for joining us and taking us uh, through your call on all of these individual stocks that is on the entire FMCG space that we just spoke about. But with that, it's time for a short break on the show. When we come back, we're going to discuss the market technicals. We will have Himanshu Gupta of Globe Capital also to bring you some of his top trades.